Hello, 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 everyone. So, it's been a good minute um, since I uploaded my last video. Uh, college pretty much took over my life. And now that I'm finally finished with college, graduating, I can finally go back to doing YouTube videos. And I'm changing up my entire format. So, I will be doing ranking videos maybe review videos of movies I want to talk about, TV shows, or just to get my thoughts about something out there. Instead of, instead of doing reaction videos, because I figured, you know what, if I want to keep this channel grow, going, and I have to grow. I have to grow as a creator. So I figured as my new video of 2020, I would rank all the films that I watched last year of 2019 from worst to best and now these aren't reviews of the movies these are just my quick thoughts um some are longer than others and maybe in the future i will have like solo reviews for these movies where i can really dive deep into them now from the title of this movie it sounded like a compelling drama about Ted Bundy being the horrible person that he was and I thought that Zac Efron was perfect casting for the deranged psychopath but unfortunately the movie was a huge dud. It was so boring and unfocused that I was falling asleep and I didn't even finish it. I eventually went back but I was unimpressed. The best part was Zac Efron. It's definitely his best role, but that's not saying much. This was the most disappointed movie I seen last year. I was so excited to see this. The first one was so good. My expectations were incredibly high, but once the game reunited, the movie lost me. It wasn't scary like I thought it was, with the exception of the scene that was with the old woman, which was mostly seen in the trailer. The only character I liked was Bill Hader's Richie. Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise was great per usual, um, but he was barely in this one. He was less of an intimidating presence, but when he did show up, he delivered. All in all, Watching It Chapter 2 was a disappointing experience, and it's a shame that it didn't deliver on what the first one did. Frozen 2 is another disappointment. Honestly, there's a lot wrong with this one, and it might need a video of its own. But for the time that I have right now, I'll explain why this is so low. I was expecting so much from this movie, the teaser blew me away, one of the best animated teasers, teasers I've seen in a long time, so obviously my expectations were pretty high, and I left the theater not knowing how I felt. I was conflicted because there was a lot of good, but there was also a lot of bad. You know what, yes, Frozen 2 will have its own video, because this segment is too small and it ain't going to be doing it justice. I have to go on a full-on rant about why I do not like Frozen 2. So stay tuned to find out my full thoughts on this movie. Captain Marvel is mad. It's not like a bad film, but it's not really memorable. Mind you, I haven't seen it since I left the theater, but from what I can remember, I had a good time, but it didn't gain, I didn't gain anything from it. It was okay, but I'm hoping the sequel will improve the problems I had with the film. And just pointing it out there, I like Captain Marvel more in Endgame than I did in her own movie. Just saying. A movie that I didn't need, but I'm glad I got it. El Camino is the epilogue of Breaking Bad since we already had our finale. It was a good conclusion to Jesse's arc, and I hope Vince Gilligan will do no more Breaking Bad related media. Better Call Saul was great, Breaking Bad was great. I want to see what Vince has cooking now. Like, I want to see what he has in store for us, because anything that man touches is just gold it's perfection so vince if you ever hear this no more breaking bad related stuff i want to see what else you can do 
How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World was a satisfying conclusion to the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. Everything I wanted from Toothless finding love and Hiccup becoming chief and marrying Astrid and having kids just made my heart melt. But my only issue with the story was it wasn't really engaging. Like, it didn't engage me like the last two did, but I still had fun with it. And I'm glad DreamWorks ended this fantastic trilogy with a bang. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, not Tarantino's best, but a great time at the movies. Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt delivered some of the best performances of their careers. Tarantino brings the late 1960s Hollywood to life, and you can really tell that he has a love for this time period and that ending. Holy shit, one of Tarantino's best endings, like, ever. Like, it, <laughs> jaw-dropping, funny as hell. Worth it, really, really worth your time. Holy shit, Shazam wasn't surprising. I haven't been surprised by a superhero film since Infinity War. This was such an enjoyable ride from beginning to end, and it slightly made up for the garbage pile that was Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad. I can't wait to see Zachary Levi continue with his character and the direction the franchise is going, aka Black Adam and beyond. This movie gets better every time I watch it. The only reason it's so low on this list is because 10 through 1 are better. But if I didn't see any of those films, then this would be my number one. Holy shit, everything in this movie is so perfect that I'm mad that it's so low on this list. But sacrifices must be made. This film is great. The performances, the story, that twist, everything is perfection. But uh, I dig This was so much fun. Tom Holland makes me fall in love with him over and over again whenever I see him on screen. He is so fantastic as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. And in my opinion, he's the best Spider-Man we ever had. The best thing about this movie is that Peter never has time to breathe besides one scene with MJ. And that stays true to the comics and I, it still makes Peter a compelling protagonist. All the side characters are great. Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio is perfect. And, a, and yes, this is a running trend in this video, but that fucking ending Holy shit, this is one of the best end credit scenes of a Marvel film ever. And it does what an end credit scene is supposed to do. It gets us excited for the next movie and sets up so many possible storylines that could happen. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Now this is a movie I didn't know I needed and I'm glad I got it. Toy Story 4 does the impossible, a fourth film in the franchise that is on the same level as the others? Wei's arc in this movie is one of the best in an animated movie. His arc makes sense for his character, and Andy's story may have ended in Toy Story 3, but Woody's didn't, and, I'm, and he got his perfect ending. And Bo Peep? She went from being an average love interest for Woody to being a badass bitch. <laughs> she was great, and this movie was great. The Lighthouse is an experience, an experience I'll never forget. The movie is so out there that I can't even explain the story. You just have to watch it. Like, guys, just trust me on this. Just just watch it. <laughs> the performances between William Dafoe and Robert Pattinson is one of the best performances of 2019. And shame on the Oscars for not nominating them for Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor. If you watch this and you still see Robert Pattinson at the Twilight Dude then there's something wrong with you. Like, he blew my freaking mind. And William always delivers no matter what movie or show he's in. It's a fantastic film, and out of all the movies on this list, it's the most underrated. Booksmart is funny as hell, and it's so freaking entertaining. It's like super bad, but with female leads who are overachievers. 
And if you love Superbad, then you'll love this. Maybe even more. The relationship between the two leads are so relatable and heartfelt. I believe that these two have been friends since childhood. All the side characters stick out in each scene that they're in. And unlike, unlike a lot of teen films nowadays, it felt authentic. And I always appreciate authenticity. I love this movie. Murder Mysteries have always been my favorite. And when I found out Ryan Johnson was directing a whodunit, I was in and he freaking delivered. The story has so many twists and turns and I was engaged from beginning to end. The cast is spectacular. From Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Tony Collette, Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Shannon, etc. Everyone brings their A game and I cannot wait to see what Ryan does next with his new films to set Daniel Craig one classic down, and many more to come. Now this is how you end a franchise. Take notes, Star Wars. Take notes. A 10-year journey to get to this epic conclusion of a multimedia franchise. And the best part is that this is the ending of the first decade of the MCU. And I cannot wait to see what Marvel does next. I don't think Marvel can ever top themselves again, but if they do, I will be more impressed than I am now. And yes, this is a very small, small take on Avengers Endgame, and I will have a future video for that coming real soon. 2019 was the year of Scarlett Johansson. My God, this woman can do no wrong in my eyes. Another unforgettable performance, and this time she was teamed up with Adam Driver, who's given probably the best performance of his career so far. This movie was an emotional roller coaster. Going through, going through a divorce is obviously never an easy, but I love that these the two leads don't hate each other or go at each other's throats every 10 seconds. This These are real people going through the end of their marriage while still trying to keep things normal for their son. As a child of divorce, this is the most personal film on this list for me. It resonated with me through, though I'm not married or even been divorced, the scene where our protagonists let out everything on the table, just let all their frustrations and their pain out is the best scene in the movie and one of the best scenes of 2019. Everything about this movie is real, and I'm so happy to have had this experience. Besides Thor Ragnarok, this is the first time I was taken into Taika Waititi's mind, and I never went back. This man is a freaking genius, and I believe Jojo Rabbit is his masterpiece. It takes a serious subject matter like war, mainly World War II, and it gave us the perspective from a 12-year-old boy. The cast truly makes this film something special. Scarlett Johansson has given probably the best performance of her career so far as JoJo's mother. I'm really torn between JoJo Rabbit and Marriage Story as which one is being the best because she just killed it this year. She brings such warmness to this dark situation. Everyone else in the cast brings their end game, their A game, man. From Roman Griffin Davis, sweet and ignorant JoJo, Sam Rockwell's idiotic captain, I'm not saying that dude's name, but it's German, uh, Thomason McKenzie's badass Elsa, and it keeps going on and on and on with these performances. Also, Taika Waititi's Hitler, unforgettable, like, the best. I love this movie so much, I believe it will be a classic of the 2010 era. Now, my number one and number two have constantly been flip-flopping since I saw number one, and I finally had to make the decision, but at my number two, it has to be Joker. Who would have thought a movie about the Joker would be a masterpiece of the comic book genre? I sure didn't. I thought it was going to suck. But I was so wrong. Joker was obviously my number one of 2019 for a good while until I saw my number one. 
taking the story of the Joker and telling it in a way that still stays true to the character's ideology is no easy task. But Todd Phillips and crew fucking delivered. This performance and the master are tied at being Joaquin Phoenix's best performance. He brings such subtlety and vulnerability to this character. A character that I'd never think I'd sympathize with, but I did. Until the very end. The movie took me by surprise. I didn't know what I was getting from it, but I came out getting so much more. But, my number one... Now that is how you subvert expectations. Not only is this the best film of 2019, but this is the best film of the fucking decade. This was my first international film. Yes, I know, tragic. But after watching this, I'm more open to watching more international films. Now, like I said before with number two, this is how you subvert expectations. This is the best classics movie I've ever seen. And it's not even about like the classic rich versus poor story. It takes that direction at first, but as soon as it gets to a certain scene, the audience is on a whole new ride. It's like going up a roller coaster. And once you start to go down the track, you hop on another roller coaster and it just keeps going faster and faster and faster. The performances, especially from Song Kang Ho, are unforgettable. The direction, the cinematography are fucking insane. This movie is perfect and deserved every single award it won during awards season. Bravo, Parasite. Bra fucking vo. And that was my rankings of the film the 2019 that I saw this year. Now, granted, I wanted to see every single film of 2019, but college, man, it sucked. <laughs> but it was also great at the same time, and because of college, I couldn't see every film of 2019. So this list may be updated again, and if it is, I won't redo this list. I'll just probably post an update on my channel saying, okay, this film got moved, this film got moved, etc. But I wanted to thank you so much for listening. I appreciate all the subscribers that has stuck with me since the very beginning. And I, I'm i actually shocked some of y'all even stayed. But so thank you. Thank you so much for staying. Um, all the new subscribers I'm hoping to get after this video, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm going to try to upload as much as I can. But, you know, I'm trying to build my brand. I'm trying to build my career. Um, if you want to follow my art or you want to see my art or my animations that I've done, here's the link to my personal website, Facebook if you want to follow me, Instagram, um, Snapchat, uh, TikTok. I'm trying to do it all, man. I'm trying to do it all. But um, thank you so much for listening and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Audio jungle.